Welcome to the County Business Talks podcast, powered by Picturebook Films. Here, we're going to be talking to entrepreneurs and business owners from across Sussex, delving into the mindsets of what makes them really tick. Okay, welcome to another episode of the County Business Talks podcast. I'm delighted to welcome my guest this week um, with three Lifetime Achievement Awards under her belt. She is a well-known figure in Brighton and Sussex. She founded Midnight Communications, the UK's first ever PR company to specialise in internet businesses, with nothing but a £2,000 overdraft and a strong belief that online would grow and flourish. Along the way, Midnight collected an array of industry awards, including PR Weeks, National Consultancy of the Year, Best International PR Campaign and Silver and Gold Awards for the Pride PR Agency of the Year. In December 2017, she sold the company to the management team, and today Midnight is still one of the most successful independent PR consultancies in the South East. She originated and managed she, um, the Brighton and Hove Business Awards for 15 years and acquired and managed Sussex Business Awards for 10 years before selling both. She had, has featured in many business titles, including Management Today and The Sunday Times, and was a Media Boss of the Year finalist for two years running as well as Sussex Business Person of the Year finalist. She was named by PR Week as one of the most influential people in PR three times. Blimey. She holds the <laughs> rare distinction of selling her company twice in 2001, of which she became CEO in 2002, before successfully conducting a management buyer and once more became the principal shareholder in Midnight. Many of the individuals she's trained have gone on and hold leading roles in national PR agencies, but she is most proud of that. Under her tenure, a member of her team was named Young Communicator of the Year, winner or finalist for 13 consecutive years. Today, she enjoys helping other companies find their answers to their communication solutions and is working on her third novel. I'm delighted to welcome the amazing... Carolyn Brown to the Yay. podcast. Thank you, Sam. That's a, a, that's you know you think you talk about somebody else when you hear all of that. It's, uh, well, I mean, what what an amazing thing! I was obviously researching, looking up bits and pieces about. I've obviously known you for for a while anyway, but oh. just what an absolutely incredible career, an incredible journey, and I'm delighted that you're able to come on and, and share it with us today. Thank so you for inviting me. It's, it's going to be awesome. So, look, as always, look, we're going to delve straight in. Um, just look, start by telling our listeners a little bit about yourself and your business journey, where it all started. Gosh, well, I suppose the first business, my first experience of business was when I used to run a club up in Hull, the Wellington Club, or the Welly as it's known, mm-hmm. over 100 years old now. Wow. And uh, I, I took over uh, putting on bands, finding a support, and part of the uh, part of the uh, the business process is uh, someone would phone up and say, I've got this great band, they're going to be number one next week, they're going out on tour for £250, uh, you can have for 200 mm-hmm. and you'd have to make sort of decisions... Uh, you know, take a view on what you thought yeah, was sure. the likelihood of them being successful mm. and uh, and hopefully fill the room and uh, make some money. So the Welly Club's about five or 600 capacity at the time. Um, we put on bands including uh, Teardrop Explodes, uh, Echo and the Bunnymen magazine, Monochrome Set, The Revillos, uh, The Beat... Uh, in fact, um, you know, Fine Young Cannibals, yeah, 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 uh, sure. Roland from Fine Young Cannibals, who was one of our sort of gang yeah, in yeah, Hull, yeah. Um, that's how he met the beat, who then went on to be the Fine Young Cannibals, wow, his wow. support band. Wow. Um, so I, I did that for three, about two or three years. I had my own band as well, of course. Oh, okay. used yeah, to play yeah. guitar. <laughs> and, really cool. Um, I, I started to hanker to move back to London because I'm London born and bred. Yeah, and yeah. I wanted to get moved back home. And uh, at the time, I was working at Women's Aid, a mother and ba- uh, a battered women's hostel. Right. And uh, I got a job at a place called Richardson House, which was uh, one of uh, a very early mother and baby hostel in Earl's Court. Right. And uh, I was running 10 rooms of single mums and their babies. I, I mention this because I managed to turn it into the most profitable mother and baby hostel in London. Oh, really? Because we had, in those days, of course... Um, the DHSS didn't talk to the council department, and it seemed—it feels a bit dishonest now. But I was getting maximum from the 
uh, from the council and maximum from the DHSS and uh, the rest was all going into the the, wow. the coffers of the house. We were, it, it was really exciting time yeah, really okay. because um, you, you'd be, have a baby on one, people who know me uh, can't believe it. I had a baby on one side, baby on the other and I'm on the phone to the DHSS saying, she's entitled to a pram. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, I, I then went to do a master's degree and in information technology. I've always been a bit of a geek, yeah. and uh, I was one of the first to have a you know one of those Sin Sinclair ZX81 what? Spectrums. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I really love computers and geeky things like that. Yeah. I used to um, do a nice little sideline of installing illegal second telephones for people. Oh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I'd get down onto the box, and I knew yeah, how yeah. to connect uh, an extension telephone. Amazing. Anyway, so I, I went to Brighton University. Um, uh, in fact, just, you know, a, a spit from where we're sitting now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did my master's degree there. Uh, then I went and got a job in a technology PR company and uh, working on the team that launched mobile phones in the UK for the first time. Wow. Um, and uh, I was headhunted by Cellnet to go and work for them or on the team that was launching mobiles to consumers. Yeah. And uh, in fact, I, I always remember when that when my very first day, I was handed two or three sheets of A4 paper. Yeah. And they said, pick your mobile phone number. And uh, I wanted something that was like 282828, but of course they'd all gone. Yeah. So I chose 757 because it was the name number of uh, the next uh, uh, big airline. So well, they're right. 737. Yeah, 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 yeah. So my mobile number is still 757757. <laughs> and, uh, and yes, I have had airline pilots say, <laughs> I'll buy that off of you, but wow, uh, wow. I've had the same number now, 30 years, I think. Wow. Um, but I hated working in corporate in corporate land. It was just, I just hated it. Yeah. Um, they didn't like me. I didn't like them. I was told when I was achieving things that I was making other people feel bad. And... Wow. Uh, uh, you, you know that story about uh, we produce five widgets a year around here and you've come in and you're producing six. You're making us look bad. Anyway, right, right, right. Um, I thought I, I, I just need to go and do what I'm good yeah. at, which is doing PR and do it on my own. So well, just I just wanted yeah. to touch on that. But when so because obviously the, there's that element of that hustling and doing bits and pieces like you've done, which is really, really cool. What, but what with the master's degree, what what? made you because obviously you had that I, I'm assuming within you uh, to want to go and do it but what, what was it that made you go I'm, I'm going to go and do a degree I want it well it was um, they were advertising for arts graduates right. who had an interest in computers because at the time there was loads of computer studies people but they're all sort of uh, wearing white coats with half a dozen pens in their top pockets yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hello <laughs> I'm doing computer studies <laughs> and uh, so they wanted um people like us yeah. who they who could be good communicators yeah, yeah, sure. um, to become technical writers yeah. and of course writing has always been my absolute passion yeah. I mean when I was in the music business um, I used to run a fanzine and I used to write gig reviews and yeah. that sort of thing so uh, the idea was oh here's a way of getting into journalism properly you know yeah, 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 sure. um, I didn't even really know what PR was I went for uh, I went for this interview with a company called InfoPress on Fleet Street and uh, they talked to me and they said, you don't actually know much about PR, do you? And I said, no, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> and they said, watch this video. And I always remember they showed me uh, a guy called Mac McEwen and he showed me this video of Waddington's Games yeah. and what they'd done to promote Waddington's Games. I said, oh, I can do that, you know. And then I was able to talk about all my experience at events management, yeah. you know, putting on bands and yeah, 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 running sure. things. He said, well, have you got any writing experience? And I just happened to have in my handbag a leaflet, which I'd written for the Labour Party, because I'm, I'm a lifelong Labour Party okay. member. And uh, it was all about, it was something to do with... Um, um, veal and uh, how their flesh is really white yep. and uh, and the reason they do that is they keep these tiny wee little crates and I'd written this real impassioned plea for do not eat veal and I produced it out of my handbag I showed it to Mac and he goes yeah yeah okay yeah you can write and uh, I got the job um, wow. I, it was, wow. I was in the right place at the right, right time, time. Yeah, I was yeah, lucky yeah, yeah. 
That's amazing. Oh, okay. So, and then, so yeah, moving on. So you come out, you thought, I'm not going to, I can't work in this corporate environment yeah. Oh, anymore. yes. Um, and, yeah. and you're like, right. So, and from that, I'm well, I went and uh, I, I set up, on, I, 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 I mentioned this to you earlier, I went to what's called the Media Centre in Jew Street yeah. in those days. I found myself a little room, smaller than the, half the size of this, yeah, yeah. £25 a week. Amen. I had a £2,000 overdraft. Um, and uh, they had something called superannuation. And when you left a job, you got this superannuation sort of lump sum. I had about £1,500 and I bought a compact computer with it mm. and uh, used to do PR for Doughty modems so I had a 2.4 modem and uh, so the first thing I did was set it all up yeah. downloading uh, one of the early um, internet uh, browsers of course I can't remember the name of it <laughs> now um, it'll come to me and uh, went off to the pictures <laughs> like three hours it took to download <laughs> this browser <laughs> but um, I, w I was lucky um, I w Good friend of mine, Jennifer Perry, with whom I'd worked on uh, Commodore and Toshiba, phoned me up and said that her husband, Roland, ha and herself were working for a company called UK Online. And uh, UK Online was going to be one of the very first online service providers. So in those days, it gave you internet access plus a whole load of content. And they said, uh, you know, we'd really like it if you'd come and, come and do the PR for us. And I went... Yeah, of course I would. It's right up my street. And uh, and it was only a few weeks later that someone phoned me up and asked me if I would do some PR for video conferencing. And I can remember the moment I was sitting at home and I went, do you know what I could do? I could specialise in the internet. And thank God I did because yeah. I then changed all our, market, all our uh, communication so that it, you know, the, the UK's first PR company to specialise in the internet, yeah. which we genuinely, genuinely were. Oh, yeah. um, Midnight, of course, is the only one that's still going. Every, everything was bought and sold, it just went bust sure, and ran sure. out of steam. And uh, it, was, it was a fantastic time. I mean, yeah. it was like the Wild West. Yeah. Uh, people were phoning me up, um, uh, have a look at the, have a look at this proposal. Sign this non-disclosure agreement. <laughs> what do you think of this? Can you do this? And I uh, I, I worked my absolute you know what yeah, off, yeah, yeah. and uh, I doubled turnover from the two thousand pound overdraft in five years. I doubled turnover every year for five years, wow. taking it to a one point six million turnover in five, in five years. years, which even now. I, I mean, I, I look at the, pe the press and papers. I, it's it's rarely, rarely yeah, yeah, achieved. We were the we were named the fastest growing PR company, two years running, and it was really hard because I was also a single mother at the time, right. and we uh, and there was no email at home, which I guess <laughs> is is probably um, a, a good idea because you know my daughter work work life working. balance. Then you it's, it's easier to, yeah. to to get that I guess. But. Yeah, so. Um, it was it was very hard. I was uh, taking my daughter to school. I was leaving the house at leaving the house half past eight. Taking my daughter to school at nine. Getting to the office, collecting bits, getting on the ten to ten train on, to London. And uh, in those days, you could rely on uh, the trains taking fifty minutes yeah. and twenty minutes into the into the centre of town. Yeah. And I was able to do a twelve o'clock meeting, a two o'clock meeting, and then still get back in time to be back into the office wow. to relieve the nanny. It, it was it was I can't That's pretend exactly. it wasn't hard. Yeah. And of course, the other thing when you're trying to deal with all the new business. Um, opportunities that's coming yeah, your way. Sure. You also need to recruit staff, yeah. and it was. I was meeting myself coming home, trying to, you know, you put out an advert for for for, for county sex or account support, yeah. and you'd you'd have this many CVs, and and it was just work, work, work. But yeah. it was also a real sense of uh, like the punk rock era. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. we're putting the show on right here. Anyone could pick up a guitar and play. Yeah. And I knew nothing about business, but... Um, you picked uh, up the guitar and played. I, I picked up my guitar, just like yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. I'm, I'm really keen. Uh, that, that's fa fascinating to hear. And I want to I wanna just delve a little bit more into that, like, around your mindset around that. Just that 
self-belief that you're going to go, I'm just going to get a £2,000 overdraft. I'm just going to make this happen. I'm just going to make it happen. It, it, wasn't, even, it wasn't like that. It really? wasn't even like that. It was, I can't bear to work at Bloody Cellnet with all these people a moment longer. Yeah. I'm sure I can survive by doing freelance PR work. Yeah. So I had two lots of notepaper. Yeah. I had Caroline Brown PR and I had Midnight Communications. And I thought people might take me more seriously yeah. if I had uh, if I was a name yeah. so it was only me but what, what I would do is you'd be walking along the road and the phone would ring and I'd grab someone and I'd say answer the phone midnight communications <laughs> and people <laughs> Mid midnight communications <laughs> say, and, and I'd grab it off the, oh thank you thanks for putting that call through yes Caroline Brown speaking how can I help I you I love that <laughs> that is brilliant that is brilliant I've got I'm, I, I'm, I'm keen to, as well, just, like, it's really interesting to hear, like you said, the different hustles and that sort of self-belief that you, that you generally, I guess, always have. But where, this, running your own business, was that from, because you obviously went and done a master's degree, but did, back when you was younger, did you think, I always want to, uh, one day I will run my own business? No. It was never like, no, it was just no, the fact I never had any ambition to really? run a business. I always thought working in an office would be, which is how you thought yeah, of business, yeah, yeah, yeah. working in an office would be, you know, oh, that would be the worst thing that could ever go wrong in my life. Yeah. I always wanted to be a writer. All yeah. I've ever wanted to be since I was seven or eight years old is yeah. write. Wow. And that is what's guided all my, my decisions along the way. Because as I say, I wanted to be a journalist. I went into PR because I thought I could be a journalist, yeah. you know. And uh, um, there was never a, a real desire That's to, true, yeah. but I've always been good at organising things. I'm yeah. a good organiser, yeah. and I'm quite good at spotting trends. Yeah. And uh, you know, so if if you need something doing, you yeah. know, I'm I'm in my element if I've got twenty different things that need doing all at the same time. I mean. Chris, cooking a Christmas dinner holds no fear for me <laughs> whatsoever. I can make sure about 10 different vegetables and the turkey all comes together at exactly yeah. the same time. But ask me to lay a table so that it looks pretty and I will fail. Because you know? <laughs> uh, that's really, because, again, I look at, for for me, like, I run a few different businesses. Yes, I know. Few, <laughs> I don't know how you do it. As we do. And, but, like, talking to you, like, I, I guess I'm, pretty similar in that sense that you go I'm okay just it's okay to do that just loads of stuff coming on you yeah. know okay I can do that I can do that because a lot of people do say oh how do you run them well, you, you just do it they, they say it. there's that saying isn't there give if you want something to do and give it to a busy person and they'll get it done and, and and I guess that's the and it's interesting to see that there's that similar trait like you just go I'll oh, just take it on but uh, so back, back to the so back to the story so you're you're there and you're running these business you're winning more and more yeah, work yeah. and obviously growing the team as well at that time so that first five years how many staff was you then in that first sort of five years what did you sort of grow to let me think at our height I had two offices with 44 staff at wow. our height um I think in those, in the, in, there must have been about 30 staff. Wow. Midnight had about, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in Brighton, there yeah, would have yeah. been about 30 staff altogether, wow. I think. Yeah, yeah. Wow. it was when I sold to BV Group that um, yeah. we acquired another couple of companies and, yeah. uh, and we ended up with 44. But there was about 30 of us. It was, it, it's, it's to find the right staff, that's what that's uh, I would say. If you said to me, oh, you know, what made Midnight so successful? It was putting the effort into finding and recruiting the right people yeah. to support you as opposed to just taking any, uh, you know, obviously there have been failures along the way, but yeah, cool. I would say out of out of all the people I've ever employed, you know, I must have employed about 250 wow. over the years. I would say 15 didn't work out, well, 15, great. 20 probably not were. A bad, not a bad ratio. I think so. yeah. yeah. Is that? Do you think that's that? Like you're, you can judge a person quite quick. Like you're able to get that. Like this is what I need from you. And were you then employing on people's attitude and how they were and they was going to fit into you? I mean, we'll delve into a bit about culture a little bit later. But I guess you, you obviously had a vision or what you wanted to create within Midnight, and they were coming and fit into that. Or yes, not and no, that, that. that's it. I, I'd read. I, I read like you do. I read the, all these business yeah. books. How to how to and and the the best the top tip was always try and recruit someone who's better than you. Yeah. 
So I was constantly looking for somebody. I, I didn't want, like, I've got five years PR experience, you know, yeah. you know well, it doesn't make you any good. Yeah. What makes you good is a can-do attitude, you know? Yeah. And I wanted people who, who did not necessarily have the experience, but they knew how to write, yeah. and they, knew, they followed the news, and they followed culture, yeah. and they were passionate about getting things done. And they, they, I, I can't stand people who are um, too cool for school, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah, 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 My sure. band was called Cool to Snog, because <laughs> the idea was the people are having the good fun are yeah, yeah. the people are on the dance floor having a laugh and having, yeah, a, having a snog. The people I can't bear are, are the, these sort of like uh, snotty, snotty people who just sort of, they can never smile or you know, they're looking <laughs> down the nose at you because yeah. you're being passionate, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so um, good people who, we used to, I always used to say to people, um, tell me a joke. Yeah. And uh, this is all old fashioned now because yeah. everyone does this sort of thing. But in, uh, uh, in those days, uh, tell us a joke. And how they replied, I would assess them, not on the quality of the joke, yeah. but on the, the how they handled being thrown a curveball. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Of course, if anybody, I also used to say to them, name the best guitarist, living guitarist in the UK. And if they said Johnny Marr, then of course they were in. It was yeah. a shoe in. That's <laughs> <laughs> brilliant. And it's. it's it's so cool, like, because even now I sort of I speak to people. I, I follow a, a guy on um, uh, one of the reasons I I sort of started the podcast. I was inspired by listening to the Diary of a CEO. I listened to Stephen Bartlett's book as well, um, Happy Sexy Millionaire, and, it, and he talks. It's a brilliant book, really interesting, and he talks about um, employing people and stuff like. That. And he purely says that purely will but employ someone based on attitude it do doesn't care about cvs in regards yeah. to qualifications what you've got but just pure. so it's really interesting you say right right back then when you started out i'm gonna just you, if you come in you've got a good attitude and you can do yeah you, you can you, you, you're gonna fit into the culture of what we're trying to achieve here great then doesn't matter if, and i guess that's back to my because oh, i talk about this quite a bit on on, on here about education and so I, obviously i'm a fan of education i support it of course i was not great at school i failed my a levels i you know didn't end up doing a, a, a degree and didn't go down that route but i, I i went in recently and done into the university in brighton and i was one of the uh, uh, one of the we done Tiger's Pen it was called yeah, yeah. it was like a Dragon's Den yeah, type thing. And it, was, and it was really interesting and I found it fascinating I listened to these people talk about something entrepreneurship is so you know it's encouraged now which is yes. great and it, which it wasn't necessarily but you know mm -hmm. I go back years and I think and it's just so important now and I think that I've got twins who are six and I'd love to think if they want to go to university great if they if there's a specific job like a solicitor or a doctor that they want to yeah. do great for if they don't I'd love them to come to me with an idea or yes. you know, I, I don't know what I want to do so I'm going to travel the world and find myself something along them lines I think there's there's so much more life experience you potentially can get than just out of education. So absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I think both are important. Yeah, of but, course. You know, of course. You, uh, if you can, uh, if you can bring a good attitude, you can do anything. Yeah. If, you, if you've got a can-do attitude, you know, uh, I think absolutely. you can do anything. Uh, I completely agree. I completely agree. Um, you, you mentioned just a little bit ago about obviously selling the company, and I always sort of mentioned in the introduction as well. So I'm, I'm really keen to because you sold the company twice. Um, you then became. CEO, I just I'm really intrigued to find out a bit more about that. Yeah. So, like, what 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 happened? What was your mindset around that? And just well, about the process, etc. What happened there? The idea, the idea always was that you build a company up in order to sell it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and then you you can play in a bigger stage. Mm. And if there, are, I I don't have many regrets, but I often think if I'd set midnight up in London. Yeah. It would have been different because it was very hard to be taken seriously in Brighton. Oh, okay. um, in those days, I mean, I'm from London, so yeah, you yeah. tend to go, go to Brighton. Oh, my God, that's miles away. Yeah. Whereas Brighton people go, yeah, yeah, I'll see you for a coffee. And, and, yeah, you know, sure, it's, sure, sure. it's a different sort of thing. And people didn't want to come to Brighton to work. And it was very hard to find trainee staff. 
In fact, I met my very first ever um, member of staff, Lindsay Edmonds, mm. who went on to become the managing director of the London office. She was working at American Express, <laughs> as everybody has yeah, done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we got talking when she, I phoned up to validate my American Express card. And she said, oh, what are you in? What do you do? And she found out I was in PR. Yeah. And she approached me with a letter entirely based on the fact that she talked to me from her American ex uh, as an American Express person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lindsay, uh, Lindsay worked me two or three times over the wow. years and uh, we've stayed good friends as well. Amazing. Uh, sorry, I forgot the question. Oh, yes. Yeah, so yeah. build it up and sell it was the idea. So uh, I took a long time trying to find the right company to yeah. sell it to. Um, the company I sold it to was listed on AIM at the time and uh, had offices in Shad Thames, uh, had uh, specialised in the internet, and um, there were two or three things that once the deed was done, I thought, oh no, they don't know. They, they're all full of, Ru it was all full of Ruperts and Tarquins who didn't know their ass from their elbow, frankly, right, you know? Right. So we were sitting around a boardroom table one day and uh, all the different, so there was about, there must have been six or seven companies within the group. Oh, okay. And so, uh, like a web designer and a direct mail company, advertising, PR. Yeah, yeah. So they're going around and they're sp speaking to him. They're going, so, um, uh, so how much are you going to bill in September? And he goes, oh, I'm, I'm going to bill 100. Um, oh, great. And, uh, and on to the next one. Uh, what, how much are you going to bill? And they came to me and... Uh, and, and just before they came to me, they, they said to this guy, so uh, I'm going to bill 100. Um, yes, how much is actually booked? And he goes, oh, well, we've got 65, 70 booked. And then he went on to the next guy, how much you got? 100, oh, we've got about 70 booked. So I'm sitting there thinking, you're going to generate 30 grand of new business in a month. You're going to generate 30 grand of new business. So they came to me and they said, how much are you going to... And I always remember the figure. It was 140. I said, we're going to bill 140 next month. And they go, oh, yeah, but how much of that is booked? And I said, 140. Lovely. And I thought, X, Y, D, Z, excluded, deleted. Oh, my God, what have I got? I've got myself in with a bunch of, yeah. or, of, of uh, people who don't know how to run a business. Sure enough... They'd overexpanded. Um, they'd pay something like forty pounds square meter for Shad Thames property, which yeah. they couldn't get rid of. <laughs> to make it even worse, they were working with. Um, I'm laughing at it now. It wasn't funny no, at the time. I can imagine. I can imagine. Um, they um, they had um, bought a load of media on behalf of some betting company. Five hundred grand's worth of media they had committed themselves to without having the money in the bank. Wow! Wow! So I went away and I said to him, look, you know, this is, this don't look good to my, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm a working class girl and, and you're used to, it. someone speaks nicely, you tend to take them seriously. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I said, this doesn't look good. Look, I tell you, what, I, why don't we change the name to Midnight Communications? We've got a great deal of credibility. We've won a lot of awards. You know, there's, we have a big client base. Change the name to midnight. Give me a role to 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 run the yeah. the whole thing for you. Ha 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 ha. Who does she think she is? Ha ha ha. A year later, we've had a great idea. We want to change the name to midnight and put you <laughs> in charge. So I'm sorry, mate. It's it's that ship has sailed. Yeah. We can um, you can put me in charge, but you're not changing the name to midnight. So I that so I became one of the one of the very few women, if any at all, who was the CEO, CEO of an of a aimlisted company. And wow. I spent the next, uh, must be six months, it was just horrendous, um, selling off the individual companies within the group in wow. order to try and cover the dreadful debts that they'd got themselves into. And of course, they're overextended in the Shad Thames, yeah. trying to cover this 500 grand bill. In this, at the same time, there was money they owed me. I hadn't had all of my upfront money. Yeah. I hadn't had all of my buyout money. Um, spent the next six months trying to sell me 
oh my god we, they dragged dragged me like a like a teenager all around the country to these other PR companies said will you by midnight will you by midnight and me having to put a smile on my face and yeah of course I can fit in here and work with you wow. it was awful then I thought to myself I know I'll buy the bloody thing back again <laughs> <laughs> so I went round to various business people Adam from Designate yeah. uh, Simon Fanshawe a uh, couple of other people, a guy called John Button, actually, who's in my book, uh, okay. in honour of him. And uh, together, I managed to scrape enough money together to buy Midnight back. Wow. Oh, God, it was a very wow. emotional day. I feel yeah. a bit emotional, actually, yeah, thinking sure, about it sure. now, getting the company back again, you know. That's, that's incredible. Yeah. yeah. And then to... God, what a mi- like you say, what yeah. a mixture of emotion as well. To go from that's like you said, you, we, many of us build a business up because you want to go, right, I'm going to build a business up, I'm going to sell it, and then yeah. other options, and it creates different opportunities, I guess, like you say. But then to go in and be in that position to then look at it and go, right, I'm going to have to take this back to, to, yeah. to take it on, and go, that's, in, that's incredible. Wow, wow. <laughs> what, an, what an interesting period. Like, like you say, tough, I'm sure. And yeah. that, especially, like you say, I guess at that. Stage, you know, this is because this is early in early two thousands, wasn't it? Around two thousand three, August two thousand three, I bought it back. Wow, wow! But like you say, I guess that it's interesting. I, I'm not going to say only, but it's interesting with the as a, as a woman in business at that particular time, because obviously things have changed a lot over the last sort of twenty years or so. And but how difficult was that? In as a, what, did you ever see like? Mm. Not intimidated, like you certainly, knowing you as I do, I can't imagine you ever be intimidated, to be honest. But surrounded by like these people, like you said, like maybe really well spoken and like that. Did, was there ever a period like that where you look at you, or do you, did you just the self belief you've got in yourself just go, I know I'm right here, I know I can do a better job than any of these people, and I'm going to do it. That exactly, that. <laughs> love it. And I, I, I never, I never, f- I, if ever I was intimidated. I would I will have been intimidated by other women yeah. feeling that I had to uh, be respectful yeah. and careful and ensure that they got their share or yeah. share of the shout in terms of meetings yeah. and being respectful of other or, or, of the sisterhood if yeah. they were there. Um, being with blokes didn't bother me because I knew that they'd, they'd kick me out the door as soon as look at me. So I felt quite comfortable about, I've always felt quite comfortable about dealing yeah, yeah. with men and just knowing that I was coming from, from a disadvantage point that I just had to be be better than them yeah, yeah, in yeah. order to succeed. Amazing, amazing. Right, I want to I move on slow. So we've got, um, so Van Midnight, all in total over, over sort of 22 years. Um, Really keen, I always as a sort of talk about culture and, uh, and the business. We sort of alluded a little bit to that earlier and surrounding yourself with good people. But just uh, talk to me about the, how did you build such a strong culture? Because like, it's almost, even, um, you know, as, as you know, I sort of interviewed Flo previously, obviously one of one of your, your staff members who didn't obviously own it. <laughs> and, she, but, and, and she talked about this mid, midnight family that you sort of, and she said, I think you sort of created that from the start, which Dave sort of continued with as well. So just, just talk to me a little bit about the culture. I of wanted to create a company that I wanted to work, work for. Mm. When I was working in the corporate environment at Selner, people were, people used to get to their desk at eight o'clock and because it was slough, people were driving from all over the place. Yeah. In order to get a place in the car park, you had to get to the car park by eight. Because if you didn't get to the car park by eight, you had to park your car or 20 minute walk away and pay five pounds a day for the privilege. <laughs> okay. So the, the, so the bosses had it in mind. There's no need to expand the car park. Let's all have them at their desk at eight. And of course, when, when six o'clock comes round, no one's walking around going, it's six o'clock, time to clear off home yeah, to your yeah, loved ones. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, I don't, I, I don't, I'm not going to, I'm not mm. going to do that. So I wanted to create a company um, that I wanted to work in. Yeah. So I used to say to people, I gave everyone a mobile phone in those days. Nowadays, of course, it's different. You've got your own. But everyone came to work for me, got their own mobile phone. We were one of the very first companies in the UK to introduce duvet days. I mean, everyone does duvet yeah, days yeah. now. Uh, we used to have duvet days, um, uh, health care, gym membership, of course. Mm. 
Um, and we had something that if you'd been out late the night before and, you know, you, you hit, didn't hit your bed till two or three, don't come in. Don't, you don't have to get there for nine and sit there, everyone feeling sorry for you. You know, come in at 11, have a couple of strong coffees and come in at 11. Yeah. You know, get as long as you get the work done. My view has always been as long as you get the work done, I, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not checking in on your clock. Everyone's got responsibilities. You get the work done, do the job well, and, you know, do your own hours, you know. And that sort of in, engenders a sense of the other... We, we used to have 10 rules for working at midnight, and one of the key rules was never go home and leave someone else sitting at their desk. Always say to them, uh, you know, are, are you all right? Is anything I can do to help you? You don't okay. leave, you know, no man left, no woman yeah, left behind. Yeah, you know, yeah. it was the idea that you, cons you, 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 you consider everyone. And, and the point, we, uh, being a socialist, yeah. um, it, we're an egalitarian. We were, I am, they are, they still are, an egalitarian business. So the managing director is just as important as the cleaner. You can't, the clean, the cleaner cleans and they've got to do a good job. The managing director has their job. Everyone has their jobs to do. And I would freak, I would let people see if there was a spillage on the floor, I wouldn't call someone else to go and do it. I'd, I'd let people see me get down on my knees and clean the floor myself. Uh, you know, I would clean a toilet if we had someone come in and, you know, I, I never expected anyone to do a job for me because everybody is as important as anyone else. And, and I think that engendered a sense of loyalty from my staff to me because I would never ask anyone to do anything I was not able to do myself. And therefore, if I ask someone to do something, <laughs> just thinking about Boris Johnson, actually. <laughs> you know, um, here's an example about how not to do yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. I know you don't want to get political, but <laughs> but that was that was the plan, and I, and I think in that way we we did pull together as an organisation. And uh, I led from the front. I would try and be the first one in, and I'd try and be the last one to leave. And um, and in that way, people could see that uh, I wasn't swanning around having a good time yeah. while others were were grafting. I, lo I love that. I think that that for me is definitely. Like, and uh, until you're in it, it I, I, I really reason I ask this question so much about culture because I I, I don't know if I'd actually met. I don't think I'd met you when I had the salon when I owned my hair salon. Um, it seems like another lifetime now, but it's what brought me to Brighton, and I've, you know, it was a failure. It didn't work out for me, and it was it was a struggle. But I I know I went in there and I didn't get the cut. As being a non hairdresser running a hair salon, I. I wasn't myself and I went in with a vision of what I thought leadership was like and I got it wrong completely. Yeah. I hold my hands up to that and I, I think I got that wrong. And um, it was, and I f that's why I find this subject so fascinating because it is culture creating the, you just ticked so many boxes in yeah. the sense, look, I want to create somewhere where I want to work, where other people want to work. But ultimately, Ryan Hill said it very much similar in the sense of leading from the front. You've yeah. got to be the person who, because how do you get people to come mm -hmm. on that journey with you unless you're going to be the one that's going, right? Uh, um, quite, um, I gave bonuses to everyone right from the very start. You know, I yeah. let people know exactly what we, what the target was in terms of profits. Mm -hmm. And the profit, profit wasn't a dirty word. Profit was we've got X amount goes into the re reproducing the company, and X amount goes into I mean, that into the staff. The stuff. Absolutely transparent. I, I, and do you know what? I drove around in this crappy old mini for seven years because I didn't think, I didn't want my staff to see me driving some posh car that, yeah. and I was wrong. And it, and it took the wonderful Fiona Graves, who's now at Platinum Publishing, yeah, yeah. to say, Carrie, people don't want to see you driving in a Mini. They want to see you in a Mercedes, you know? Yeah. And I took her at her word. <laughs> brilliant, I love that, I love that. That's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, and fascinating to hear. And 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 I was sort of, I guess, how I imagined it to be. Again, back to I guess with Flo and and, and from knowing you when you was at midnight and over the years and seeing and you you just got that feeling that every time I met someone from midnight, it was this you know family environment that you'd created and people you were all in it together like yes. it was all part of it and that's uh, and that come across I guess that like from someone from the outside looking in and that come across that you obviously and done with a great good manners job as well yeah. I think manners maketh the person yeah. and uh, this is one of the things 
that I, I'm keen to work on in the future is to teach the youngsters coming up how to have business etiquette, how to conduct themselves in business situations, yeah, sure. uh, how to have good manners. Mm. Um, good manners leads to good business. Yeah. It's re- you know what? That's really true. I was at a, a business owner's brunch this morning and we was talking, uh, They we just went round at the table, we were just having a bit of a, a, a chat about pet hates. And one of mine is um, how people treat waiters and waitresses within a restaurant oh, it is a bugbear of mine Absolutely. that they just can't like, I've seen it before people just there's the elitist attitude almost <laughs> that they come over and they just as if like you've got to serve I oh, just can't it really grinds on me and yeah. but you can find out a lot about a person like if you go for a lunch or something with someone you're having a coffee or whatever and you see how they treat but it's like maybe not the person I want to do business with if they're Absolutely. Like, it's, it's interesting you say it it's cool well, look, let's um Let's go. I want to want to talk. Obviously, as as business owners, with many challenges, sometimes a lot of failures. Um, what does that look like to you? Like failures wise, can you? T- I mean, we've talked. We've obviously delved <laughs> a little bit into the whole. Not so much failures, but challenges when with the whole buying out, etc. But yeah, I'm keen to to uh, uh, any failures over that over I, your business I, career or. I think chal- main the, challenges. The biggest the biggest challenge in this fast growing the time when the business yeah. was fast growing was being a single mum and mm. trying to recruit staff yeah. and, uh, and and bed the staff down and making sure that all the plates were continually spinning. The worst time of the business for me was when there was the crash 2008, yeah, 2009. Sure, sure. That, was, that was horrendous because um, overnight, America, the Americans, we had a lot of American business, being internet, yeah, uh, sure. uh, largely companies, um, and lots of Americans based in the UK who were just cutting the PR budget and, and leaving us behind. And uh, it, it became really obvious that I had some big decisions to yeah. make. And it was it was just the worst time ever. Having to, I had to make a number of people redundant. Yeah, sure, sure. And... Um, and just, I just didn't want to be, you know, I didn't want to be what someone who, who'd said, oh, well, it was all too much, so I just wrapped the company up and walked away. I never wanted to do that, not because of the staff. Mm. If I'd done that, yeah. I mean, it's all very well, you, you have to get, I think we got rid of 10 people. Yeah. Um, what about the 20 that's left behind, you know, of the yeah. eight, eight, 17, 18 left behind? Um, it wasn't just about me. I'm, it, my responsibility yeah. as a business owner yeah. has always been to my team. And wow. by wrapping up the business, so, oh my God, it was just, it was awful. It was but obviously absolutely awful. At that, at that time, that was there was there ever a thought process where you looked at it and go, oh, that might be, that's realistic, that might have to happen potentially. Well, yeah, absolutely. I, you know, don't, don't tell my account. Ugh, don't tell my accountants this, but uh, they they look they looked at our our figures, and uh, they were worried enough to come in and say we need to talk to you. So I put together some some uh, r- real uh, um, shaky spreadsheets to show <laughs> no business projections for the forthcoming time, and uh, had them in the boardroom. And uh, forgive me, I'm sorry. <laughs> I had them in the boardroom. So. Yeah. You can see with all this, yeah, it's all signed and sealed. Don't you worry about it. And okay, and they signed off the accounts, and wow. we lived to breathe another day. But it was, it, we, we we went down to from the heady days, the one point six million. Yeah. When I bought the company back, we 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 were sort of like one point one, one point two yeah. for a good four or five years yeah. and then the crash happened and we just lost so much business we went down to something like 300 grand wow it wow. was it uh, was well it yeah, was horrendous yeah, yeah, yeah. and um and there was nothing for it but to <clears throat> pull up my sleeves pull up my sleeves put my nose to the grindstone and get back out there and do it again you know and and sure enough you know i i i i put on 100 grand a year i doubled the turnover and uh, it was significant the company is significantly larger by the time i moved on yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. i'd certainly doubled our turnover wow, wow. That's, I mean, look, what an inspirational story. Just listen, because I, I, I remember the crash at the time. Obviously, I, I wasn't 
running a business at that at that point, but I, I remember it well. And, I, and now I talk to people within the business community and, and going through that stage. Uh, I mean, look, we, we've all been affected by COVID over the last, and, and a lot of the conversations I've had on here, the difficulties that people faced in COVID. But yeah, going back to that time and thinking, that's a huge decrease from 1.2 yeah. million to that. To, but what's amazing, and this is what is fascinating, is the, the and for anyone listening and people thinking about starting their own businesses, all the challenges that come with it. But ultimately, one of the biggest things that's come out of these podcasts, I guess, is the, the word resilience. And, yeah. And like, you've got to have that in your locker, haven't you? You've got to have that resilience, just that I'm not going to give up. I'm going to make this happen. I'm there was no way I was going out in Brighton and have people point at me and say she failed. There was Amazing. just no way I was going to let that happen, you know? Amazing. Amazing. Wow. Well, look, obviously, they, we, we sort of move on. So we talk, we talk about failures, and, and, you know, I think in the introduction... We, we went on for quite a while about a, a list of achievements. Sure, there was loads there, of other there, failures. There, there, but well, there, there was lots of lots of career highlights and and successes. Um, but just a couple of what one like define what what success looks like to you, and then talk to me about maybe your your best achievement or okay. biggest success. Well, my uh, one of the the best achievements in my life, yeah. apart from the book, which we'll come on to. Yeah, 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 sure. um, I used to be in a band. I used to play guitar in a band called cool Snog. And I was getting ready to go out one night. I was listening to John Peel, and John Peel goes, and here they are, all the way from Hull, it's cool to snog. And John Peel played my record. And I think that's probably one of the <laughs> highlights of <laughs> that's one of the highlights of my life. But business wise, um, the I have the greatest joy in seeing the midnight alumni a around the world, but B setting up their own businesses. I mean, companies like Man Bites Dog and Fugu PR and Giant PR and the Fabulous Collective, uh, and the fantastic work that Alex and Flo have done with Midnight. Seeing the success of those, I mean, Sarah Ogden, who is my managing director for a good eight or nine years, now heads up. Uh, the European Network for Lewis Communications. She came to me as an account assistant. I trained her. For 13 years running, I had a a winner or a finalist for the Young Communicator of the Year. And I'm I'm just, that is my proudest achievement. Forget about everything. To to have been able to train those kids and uh, to the point where they can go off and run their own businesses and so everywhere you go, there's in the PR world, oh, yeah, there's yeah. a little bit of midnight somewhere. And some of the uh, some of the work that we've done, and some of the the, the things we originated, yeah. I, I see pop up, and I thought oh, that was my idea twenty years ago. And and love that's that. that's what I love best. That's what I love best. That that that, that that's so amazing. Like, and it must be like. What, look, one of the reasons I was so pleased you wanted to come on. What an in- inspiration that you are to, to do that. You. But but to, to inspire all those people to, like you say, to maybe come and work for you in that sense. And then you've built them up to get to a stage where you go. Because I remember, I think, again, I'll go back to Flo. But Flo said, like, when I think when you actually interviewed her, you was like, why don't you start your own PR company? She was like, I'm not ready or whatever. And she, so she's come, she knew that. I'm going to come and work for the best. I'm going to learn from the best. Yes. And then look, and it's worked out and then she's obviously doing it. But it's just, that's amazing to to see how many people you've inspired. And I know that obviously now you, you well, again, we'll move on to it a little bit later, but like, you know, going and helping other people, other businesses going in and, and supporting them with with the knowledge and mm-hmm. experience you've, you've got over the years to be able to do that is, and then hopefully inspire another generation of people as that's, well. That's is, the plan. Yeah, that's amazing, amazing. Wow, okay, well, I, we have, um, so we did t- talk. Uh, we talked about some some of the challenges. I just want to move on. And again, a couple of things that I always highlight in a podcast: one, culture, being which we discuss. The other is work life balance. <laughs> and y- you sort of alluded to it at the start, obviously, at the difficulties of being a single mum and trying to do that. Y- you know, maybe whether it was slightly easier to to have work-life balance when we didn't have the emails and stuff mm. at home like now nah, everyone's got their phone you can be on 24 hours a day but w- over the years what, what sort of things did you do did, did you ever achieve a work life? I mean I can imagine in PR that you know <laughs> events and stuff like that how do you juggle them things someone said to me that um, if you do something that you love then you never have to work a day in your life yeah. 
and I love my job. I mean, it's, you know, what better job is there, really, yeah. than being in PR? You get to go meet all sorts of people. You meet entrepreneurs, you meet corporate types, you meet interesting people, you meet dullards, and you think, how on earth do they ever get to where they've got? Yeah. You get to do fantastic events, um, set up uh, new challenges. I mean... Uh, one of the PR things, uh, it's 10 years ago today that the Sky Sports Living for Sport Student of the Year Awards was held at Wembley. Yeah. That was my idea. That was my idea wow. to let's have some awards for uh, youngsters to inspire them to, to go and do sports. And that all comes from uh, the client saying to you, um, this is where we want to get to. What sort of ideas or projects or vehicles can you come up with yeah. to, to get there? Um, one of the best things we did was uh, we had something called the, oh God, was the desktop lawyer. Yeah. And they said to us, well, we want to promote online divorce. And we go, well, how, how do we promote online divorce? So I thought, well, who's going to really hate that? The Vatican. Yeah. So we phoned up the press office at the Vatican and say, what do you think of uh, the concept of online divorce? They go, it's the end of the world as we know it. Thank you. Front page of the Observer. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. And doing the, do, being able to have the freedom yeah. to do those things. And this, one of the things I used to love about the Brighton Hub Business Awards, um, I had uh, Marcella Whittingdale, one of the newsreaders, I had her come on in a tuk-tuk at the, yeah. at the Metropole. And uh, we had, we've had Dolly Rocket and doing Amy Winehouse impersonations. And to be able to be just that little bit out there yeah, yeah. and be able to take risks and be cheeky, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 that's sure. it's the best job in the world, really. So, and so many of my friends yeah. are, are my work colleagues that it never really, it wasn't really work, you know. Yeah. So you didn't feel the need to, like, like, like and I, I guess this is one of the things, I, I, it was really, because I've done a, I, I recorded a podcast and talk, we talked about, we've done like a special episode talking about mental health. And I was talking about, you know, trying to have that separation and that break from work and so, and I, and I'm really conscious that look, I've got a young family, I want to be there for them as well. Um, and I, I, I try and be a good dad as much mm -hmm. as I can and a good husband. But at the same time, I do, spinning plates and running different businesses mm. and i'm actually lucky that all the businesses i run i love all, all of them so it like, people say like with a podcast mm. i love doing this it's, it's brilliant sitting here chat what's not to love so you go you do all them things and you spin all them plates but it doesn't feel like i need i don't feel oh, i've got to get up and go and do uh, another things are work. different though i think mm. nowadays when when i was working at infopress um when i was you know my my first pr yeah. job you wouldn't share your private life. Yeah. So, um, for example, if my daughter had measles, I wouldn't phone and say, I can't come in today, my daughter has measles. Yeah, yeah. There would be panicky conversations with my husband behind closed doors as to who's going to fall on their sword sure. and not go into work. And you just, uh, you you wouldn't share that stuff. I am I think there can be a little, um, I think, there can be a little oversharing now yeah. in terms of with business people, you're trying to arrange something and they'll tell you the, uh, of the inside story. Yeah, sure. um, I don't need to know that. Yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes I don't need to know a stranger's backstory before sure. I arrange a meeting that is yeah, convenient yeah, sure. to both of us. And I'm sorry if that makes me sound hard, but um, any of my ex staff will tell you I'll, I'd be the first to walk them round the round the block with a tissue and looking after them and yeah. send them off to to to, to have care and, yeah. and consideration. But we that's how I was trained was to. So when I was pregnant and uh, I took some like three days off work or in 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 total before I had the baby and they all said, "Well, you're not coming back to work, are you?" I go, "Yeah, yeah, of course I'm coming back to work." Yeah. And Nowadays, I really envy these young women who are able to take a year off work, which I, the very thought, at, at my point, which was 1990 when I gave birth to my daughter, yeah. um, the thought of being able to take, uh, I took three months off work yeah. and, and I actually did a couple of presentations in that three months and I also did some freelance work in that three months as wow. well. Um, 
and I felt I had to go back to work because if I didn't go back to work, I, my place would have been missed. Yeah. I would I would have been uh, replaced, and uh, and that makes me feel sad now. Yeah. And thank God we don't have with that. Th those days are past. Yeah, sure, sure. But um, I think a nice balance yeah, between yeah, yeah. the two is important. Yeah, yeah. It's, I w w I'm interested to say, uh, if you don't mind talking about, but with, with your daughter, what, do, what does she do? Like, what, what's what do you think she does? She's in PR. <laughs> I better Love not that. say where she worked no, for no, no. in case, in case uh, my reputation, in case she's kept me a secret. But she came to work at midnight for um, for three years, wow. and uh, and I think. You know, to be fair to her, it was hard um, for her to have a successful mum who spent a lot of time working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it wasn't until she came to work with me, and uh, I wasn't mum, I was Carrie. Yeah. She, uh, I think she started to learn, you know, what um, what it was all about and what it took. Yeah. But I'm phenomenally proud of her now. Amazing. She's an account director at one of the cities biggest and most fantastic agencies wow. and um, she's doing very very well and uh, I, I'm pleased that she's in we've got a dynasty <laughs> that's amazing I, I love that because obviously as a father like myself thinking I'd love I almost I love the thought of one day one of the kids wanting to run their own business or, or wanting to do something along the lines of like, like, like I'll be inspired but it must be so lovely that you've inspired her to follow that career path and well I, d I don't know if I inspired it but uh, she's a hard-working yeah. young woman and uh, and she she's incredibly creative and thoughtful and considerate to others and uh, mm. I'm most proud of the young woman that she's become amazing amazing cool right I want to move on how, how could we possibly not talk about um, becoming a published author yes <laughs> amazing can we see the book like to say, I've got my signed copy here as well. Thank you very much. Of course, Thank you very I, I much. couldn't come without a signed copy. <laughs> this is my pride and joy. Amazing. I mean, look, I understand you, you, you've alluded to it already. It's been a lifelong ambition to do it. So when you said you were like seven or something, you wanted to but, uh, talk to me about it. Like, where, where the you obviously sold midnight, and it was um, this is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go and what? well, it, it, it was. Uh, I, I think I was in the classroom and I was about seven or eight and they're saying to me, um, you have a name, write, make up a story and there were some characters or something. I started writing yeah. and I, I couldn't finish. You know? I remember, I, I can still see the teacher's face. She picked it up and she started flicking through it and looking at me and going, did you write all this and you did all that? And I said, yeah. She goes, what? And uh, I thought, I'm going to be a writer when I grow up. And it's the only ambition I have ever had is to be a writer. And um, I think it was the year 2016, I uh, said, right, Alex and Flo, I'm taking a month off, I'm going to Ibiza, and I'm going to write a novel in 30 days. And uh, thank God I had Alex and Flo. And uh, so... Uh, uh, I could write a book about those 30 days in yeah, Ibiza, yeah, yeah. but needless to say, I did not come back with uh, with uh, an 85,000 word novel. I came back with about 1,500 words of nonsense, <laughs> um, which are in here somewhere. Yeah. But when I came back, I knew that's what I wanted to do. And I signed up for a uh, new writing South class in September. And I started writing uh, so, uh, and while I was writing, it became really clear I'd I'd done what I wanted to do in terms of running a PR company. Yeah. Um, Alex and Flo were very competent women who I knew would be worthy successors. Yeah. And uh, I think Flo alluded to it in your podcast that um, there was a happy a happy meeting of circumstances yeah. in that uh, Platinum Business wanted to buy the two award schemes yeah. and some of the staff have been with me for a number of years it was time for them to move on and it was going to be it, there was it, it was a time a of a natural it, progression and, and it, absolute yeah. because I couldn't just leave and say bye everybody I'm leaving you in the hands of some stranger yeah, you know yeah, yeah. it had it, it, 
the timing was right. So I went off and I just put my nose to the grindstone, started writing. Mm. And uh, I was lucky that a uh, uh, publisher in the US, in New York, picked it up. And uh, of course, all, all the promotion that I was going to be doing in, in, I was going to go to New York, do radio interviews, yeah. and of course, all that's gone by the by, hasn't of it? Course, because yeah, of, yeah. of, of, of uh, you know yeah. what. Yeah. But um, I finished my second one now. Amazing. Wow. And I have an agent, uh, David Headley from uh, David Headley Literary Agency, and uh, he's uh, he's in the process of editing at the moment. Yeah. And uh, I've got an idea for a third one, and uh, I'm, I'm, I've had the idea for a third. I'm really just trying <laughs> to wind myself up to go and sit down and write it, but uh, I keep wow. getting distracted by podcasts and tennis. And <laughs> <laughs> Mate, wow! But it, it will happen. Nice. It's so incredible, what, and it must be that unbelievable. Like, look, we all set s certain goals in life, and I'd love to do that. I'd love to do that and to actually then go. I've like, a lifelong ambition to go and do it, and that like, just tell me a little bit about like, the emotion. It must have been incredible that oh, God. the day that comes out published. Wait. When I've actually got a TikTok of me opening the north, <laughs> opening this that. box of, and I go, oh, wow. it's my novel. I just, I just, I, of course, I had to film myself because there's no one around to film yeah. me. And uh, yeah, it was. I, well, I cried. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I cried, I and then I got drunk. Yeah, and then I, yeah, then I found a table to dance on, and uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's it, it's. It's the greatest feeling ever. Yeah, amazing. Apart amazing. from when we won the best international PR awards <laughs> at, 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 at PR Week in the year 2000, the year wow. we also won the PR Company of the Year on a national basis. That, it, it, those up there with those them, are the, yeah. They're, they're the highlights, aren't they? You, like like we, we've alluded to in the whole journey of running, if you love running your business as, as we do and you talk about that, because it's all about that, isn't it? It's about enjoying that journey. It's not about, and that's what's lovely, I guess, and cause I've spoke to a couple of people who have sold businesses and almost like a little bit of a anti-climax uh, of selling what it. What do you Because, yeah, what, what, what's my, but I guess for you, is there slightly different? Because like you said, you've, you've built this agency, you've passed it down to people who have worked with you, you've got almost this, so they're going to carry on a legacy. Of, yes. of what you've done and then you already knew what you wanted to do because this is a lifelong act. so what a lovely transitional period to be able to go because that just ticks so many boxes isn't it? you don't have that anti-climax you go this is what I wanted to achieve I've done that with PR thanks very much I want to go and do this now yeah. I've done that I'm thanks blessed. very much I, I, I've, I've had a fantastic blessed life yeah, with some fantastic people yeah. and opportunities and some good fun along the way you know so Amazing. but what I take from it is, and wipe right from back when we, from the in, initial introduction, I guess, and, and just talking to you in the first bit, you said it's that can-do attitude, though. The fact that you believe that you can do all of them things, that's got to, that's gets you to them places, doesn't it? That gets you to achieve them goals. I yes. Guess. Yeah. Amazing. Well, look, we're coming towards the end. I just want to, before we sort of wrap up with a couple of bits, I want to just just tell me what does the future hold for Ken um, Brown. I, I'm keen to, so I've spent uh, all the lockdown time sort of yeah. sitting at my desk, um, uh, examining my navel really in terms of writing about the 18th century and being yeah. deep in there. And when I emerged at your launch was the first time I, I, I'd been out and all these people who you used to see all the time yeah. and then you hadn't seen for so long. It really was an eye opener for me when to make me realise um, I don't want to say goodbye to the business world. I love wheeling and dealing. I've yeah. always loved wheeling and dealing. And I feel I have a lot of skills and a lot of experience. I mean, I provide a business advice to people like Adobe and O2 and Samsung and Fujifilm and Nottingham Carnival and yeah. Kalamazoo and Alcatel and so many people. I would just, I'd like to be able to... Um, to work with the young generation. Yeah. I'd like to talk to them about how to conduct themselves in the meeting. You know, if it, it, the people are gradually w going bleary-eyed back into the boardroom and, and there's kids sitting there and they're there as work experience. They haven't a clue what's going on or, you know, should they pull the tea? Should they not pull the tea? Should they go to the photocopier? You know, you know 
how do I be? How do I make an impact yeah. without making an ass? Making an impact without making an ass yeah, of themselves yeah, 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 yeah. is sure, is, sure, sure. is is the challenge that's facing so many of them. Yeah. And how to write decent, like yeah. I mean. The writing quality of people nowadays is just down on the ground. Mm. And good writing skills are so important, as are great presentation skills. So what I'm really, I, I'm really looking to try and work with some of the younger, new hires yeah, yeah. and be able to, to sort of give them confidence, coax them along, maybe act as a bit of a mentor, you know, I, you know, but what do you think I should have done when this happened? And, and yeah. really sort of encourage them. Whilst also, uh, you know, if there's any business owners out there who are thinking about selling their business, um, they don't know what it entails, how to go about it, yeah. and and how to, yeah, yeah, as you say, the, the anticlimax yeah, of yeah, yeah. selling a business. Um, I'd like to talk to those sort of people. That's that's mm. what I'd like to do whilst I continue to, to write, right, of course. Number. Wow. Amazing. I mean, look, 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 we've gone through the podcast. Um, I can imagine how many people listening are going to be inspired by oh, your story and your journey. You. And I think, Thank you, you know, and I, and I really, look, I truly believe that there's, you know, there's so many businesses you could help with the amount of knowledge and experience you've got over the years with so many different things the challenges that we've sort of spoke about already and 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 you've probably gone through many of them as well like you say so it's i'm sure there's many people listening that would would reach out and i'd, I'd encourage people to reach out and, and speak to you definitely so um i wish you all the success with that and thank your next you book, how exciting thank how you exciting. thank you so much so look, we're just gonna we're doing something a little bit different. So I've, I always used to wrap up with a little bit of a sort of quick fire question, but I've, I've sort of almost, I guess I said I was inspired by Stephen Bartlett, Diver CEO, and I've sort of I'm, I'm gonna obviously say I've stolen a little something from him from um, getting one of my guests to write uh, a question for the next oh, guest. Right, yeah. So I've got for my previous guest was um, what? Give me one piece of advice. What piece of advice would you give your younger self before starting out on your business journey? Not every email needs to be answered immediately. Okay. Uh, I, I think um, one of the reasons we were successful, we are successful, um, is uh, I, you know, I really encourage don't go home until uh, you know, divide all your tasks into A, B, and C. Yeah. Um, a has to be done today. B by the end of the week. C when you've got a spare moment. Never go home until you've completed all your A tasks because it's really hard in PR to manage all the work that needs doing. Um, I think I was too strict on myself. Um, I, I forced myself to do more than was probably necessary. I was always going that extra mile. And I think I'd go, uh, my advice to myself is go easy on yourself. You know, yeah. Learn to take the odd day off, yeah, yeah, you know. Sure. Uh, and, uh, yeah, learn take a little bit more time for yourself and go for a massage and, you know, just relax a little bit and enjoy the fruits of your labour yeah. rather than just continue to labour all the time. Love that. Yeah, that's really that's that's really interesting. Because I, I, I again, I guess that's one thing for me. Uh, I look at trying to take that time out because I'm really conscious. And so many people I talk to on the podcast, people are just starting out, maybe, or people who have got a, a similar journey to yourself or whatever. But it is about that. Ultimately, just enjoy that journey. Don't you know? Don't get too wrapped up. Oh, I'm going to get because I was so, I was that person. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get where? Where yeah. am I trying to get to? Just enjoy that journey and, and each part of it. And Life can change on a sixpence. Yeah. You know, it just you could be going along and everything is fine, and all of a sudden, boom! Yeah. You know, something. Uh, and a dear friend of both of ours, uh, Nick Askaroff, who Absolutely. died just before Christmas. I mean, yeah. blimey, O'Reilly. I mean, there he was, enjoying the fruits of his labour, yeah. and and. You know, that's yeah. just heartbreaking, you Absolutely. know, so um, get out there and enjoy yourself, kids. Yeah. Well, look, I think that's a that's a great way to, to finish. And look, 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 what can I say? I knew this would be an amazing episode. Thank you so much for coming on and having Thank a chat you. to me. Being so open, honest, as, as, as again, I knew you would be. I hope I um, haven't said the uh, wrong thing. Nah, <laughs> not, not, you, look, it's, you've been absolutely brilliant. And like I say, so inspiring. I'm sure so, you know, all the listeners are, are, are take so much from it. So, again, thanks again. And um, I wish you every success with the continued more novels coming out. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. Brilliant. I really appreciate the support, Sam. Thank absolute you. Absolute pleasure. Listen. 
And that is a wrap, as they say. <laughs>